This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters. episode of Small Town Western New York, I'm taking a day trip to a place that holds a warm spot in the hearts of many Western New Yorkers who went to college there. It encompasses one of the primary hubs of commerce in the southern tier, a notable college, and a beautiful small town, all in close proximity to one another, and all tucked into the gorgeous rolling hills and valleys of Cattaraugus County. I'm headed to Oleat and Allegheny. Allegheny was first settled sometime around 1820 by Ebenezer Reed, who came here from Connecticut. And as we've seen so many times during this series already, the Western New York to New England connection was strong during the settling of Western New York. The town was initially called Burton, and it was formed in 1831. And in 1851, its name was changed to Allegheny. The village here is a real hidden gem. It's a quaint and genuine village with a great vibe, and it's the perfect size for walking, especially in fall. Allegheny is also home to St. Bonaventure University. Known locally and to the faculty and students as Bonus, it's a first-class post-secondary Franciscan institution, and it has a gorgeous walking trail and even a nine-hole public golf course. I met up with Tom Missel, St. Bonaventure's chief communications officer, to talk about the school, its history, and the effect it's had on Allegheny and Oleam. Hey, Tom. Tony, how are you? Nice to meet nice you. To meet nice you. to meet you. So, you know, I've never been here before, and I've been hearing about this school for years. Tell me a little bit about the history of the college here. Well, it started essentially, Nicholas Devereaux was a pretty well-to-do um, man from the Utica area, and okay. he, was, he was interested in establishing a university, a Catholic university in Western New York. And so there were, after several times, he went to Rome a couple times, um, couldn't convince people to come. Finally, they found a friar. <laughs> what do you it, mean? He couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't. He, he, couldn't to come he couldn't convince some of the religious to, to establish a college in Western New York. Finally, he convinced some friars in Italy to come on over and establish um, a college, and they ended up here. 1856, they started the first building. 1858, they opened. In 1860, they graduated their first class. Any great school provides this uh, halo effect for its community. Absolutely. And and the reach of St. Bonaventure is immense. Yeah. It just supersedes its size, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and we are, you know, we're small. I mean, we're, although our enrollment continues to grow, which sure. is a great thing, but our new president, Dr. Gingrich, uh, always says we punch above our weight. Oh, that's a great way to say yeah, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, in one way you reflect it, and again, this kind of goes back to basketball, but when we've qualified for NCAA tournaments in the last 10 years, both on the women's and men's side, right. to see people lining the streets of Olean, I mean, we saw people lined awesome. down the streets all the way up to Hinsdale, which is about seven miles from campus, oh, just to watch the bus go to the airport. Wow. Um, well, so that shows you how much pride, so how much, much pride. civic pride so much that pride. people have yeah. here for this school, yeah. how much love that this school provides. Yeah, there's, there's no question we are very important to this region. We're as vital as we've been in 160 years. We've had our struggles. I mean, we've had floods and fires. Sure, and, sure. And like, I mean, right. Fi financial exigency about 30 years ago, which kind of put us on the brink of potentially closing. Wow. Um, but we, we, we bounced back, and we're as vital as we've ever been, and we're so critically important to the committee. There's absolutely no, no doubt about that. And I think anybody in town will tell you that. Yeah. Olean has a newly renovated Main Street with a series of roundabouts through its entire primary commercial corridor that makes for easily accessible fun for walking and exploring, with some great restaurants and shops that are famous in these parts, as they say. The Tri-County Arts Council sits just on the street from St. Bonaventure in the town of Olean. It's a great example of the sheer amount of artists and interest in the arts here in the area. It all started more than 30 years ago when a group of creatives were working together to help promote each other's art. They were working out of a 400 square foot apartment. And since then, the organization has gone on to grow into its current location in a 3,300 square foot storefront downtown. It is the Tri-County because we are representing three counties. The one that we are currently in, Cattaraugus, right. but additionally, um, Chautauqua and Allegheny County. Okay. And then, of course, we're here to represent the arts. Okay. And as we represent them, we want to make sure that everyone knows that we are a community in themselves. 
and represent every artist we possibly could. So this is about a musician, a sculptor, a painter, a poet, everything. If we're talking art, we're talking art, right? That is correct. One great thing about our clay studio is that it is universally available for anyone who wants to use it for our classes, for our clay, for our members, and it is a welcomingly open space so that we can just have as many people as possible on the wheels, at the tables, and using this space to really create. Like the other side, you see the finished product, right. but this is where a lot of it is created from our members. Right. And, and they are allowed to use this space as they need for their medium. The store here plays a very important role in everything that you guys do. Yes. Uh, I mean, you're, so anybody that produces work here can sell work here? Is that kind of So how our artisan members, they um, are allotted this space, and we will be expanding this space in 2023 to allow even more artisans in the Tri-County area to sell their works. And we represent right now over 40 artisans, and um, it's just a great opportunity for artists to mm. have their life livelihood on display and for the community to support. My final stop for the day was the Fanny Bartlett House, as it sits just a few blocks away around the corner from the Arts Council. The house was originally built in 1881, with Frank and Fanny Bartlett purchasing the home a decade later. They hired a half dozen artisans over the next few years to create the incredible detail work in the house that proudly still retains the charm, grace, and intricate, incredible beauty of that period. Kind of, you come to the Bartlett House and it's kind of like taking a step to another time. Which is what I loved about, you know, when I heard about this house, that's yeah. what I was told. That it's just like this beautiful era frozen in time. Yes, it is. It is. Everything in here is striking. Like when you walk in, you almost have to stop. It's really pretty breathtaking. I mean, you got to stop and kind of check well, everything out. That's the effect we, we would like to have people yeah. feel. and. And the fun effect too, you know. We're open Wednesdays and Fridays okay. from one till five okay. for tours. Uh, we entertain people who want to have parties here. We rent the house out to them. Uh, we have all kinds, you know, we've had weddings, we've had all kinds of How things. How fun would it be to have a Roaring Twenties party here? I'm sure you've had them, right? Well, yeah. yeah. In fact, we had a speakeasy. I have some pictures <laughs> of that around oh, here. And, yeah. uh, the combination of a resurgent economic cultural engine like Olean, along with Allegheny as it's not too cool for school companion, really makes a compelling case to take the short drive down the road here to explore all that this beautiful region has to offer. This episode of Small Town Western New York was made possible by the following supporters.